If you have been following Dr. Mix for some time, you know that my website has gone through different design stages since its first inception in 2006. I have recently decided to get a brand new design for Dr. Mix. On this episode, I will show you how a professional branding agency is taking me through every step of the redesign process, transforming my ideas into visuals, bringing the YouTube community comments into the equation, and showing me what's possible to do when you get creative with images and typography. This is the second part of a mini-series. If you're interested in finding out how we got to this point, watch How to Be a Branded Artist Part 1. And now, enjoy following along with us as we progress the Dr. Mix rebranding process. Hi and welcome to Dr. Mix! <laughs> yes, today we are at a new episode about the rebranding of Dr. Mix. Now, I know that this is not playing with synthesizers and stuff, but the knowledge that you will get here today is invaluable. It's actually something that may make a difference between uh, making it in the music game or not making it in the music game. I am in the presence of the lovely Cliff from Firedog, a very famous agency for branding and things of that nature. Hi Cliff, how you doing? Hi Tadeh, how you doing? I am very well. <laughs> Look at me. I'm so happy. I'm so excited. And, and I'm already looking at your presentation. I'm already like weeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a really exciting part of the process. And, um, you know, the way I like to work is actually be quite collaborative. I guess like session music, you know, you're riffing off others and uh, be good to get your feedback today on this uh, stuff I'm going to show you. Shall I tell you what it's about? I'll yes, please. The ingredients. Yeah. Yeah, so I called it the strategic framework, and this is like a long page that we're just going to recap on certain things that we discussed. So, um, first of all, uh, the values, which is your you know, like keywords that tie your brand together. So, we talked about creativity, about the entire process of whether it's mixing and mastering or even generating content. Um, you know, creativity is the key thing that kind of underpins all that interesting output that you create. Technology is a fundamental to the entire process. Um, but I think what's interesting about tech is it's moments in time in the past and in the present and how the two actually tie together as one kind of cohesive journey. So it's understanding technology, but like technology in context. And then I think that leads quite neatly into craft and method. And this is really about the, the artist process of, you know, going through that process and respecting tradition and kind of blending like creativity with technology, but kind of with knowledge and kind of offering that to uh, your audiences, whether it's um, somebody that's going through a mixing process or somebody on the channel that's actually learning about a new synth demo. Your understanding of method and craft is really the key kind of value that comes through that expresses the other uh, two values behind it. Nice. Okay, still with me? Yeah. This mission is like, if you took the values and you basically put this into a very short elevator pitch, you know, and somebody said, you know, what's your role? And I think, you know, inspiring people to become the best artist they can be is something that you nominated in the discussion uh, and something I actually tapped into as, as um, something that actually for purpose has this duality, you know, on the one side providing the inspiration to do it and then on the other side providing courseware or materials or even services uh, that help artists get them there. And then we talked about who is the doctor, and I think this is kind of quite crucial in terms of like understanding your positioning as a character. The character really comes through in your emblem that kind of gets attached to all the different channels. But then also what's interesting about the Dr. Mix brand is that it actually is based around a person, um, whereas normal brands are a little bit more abstracted. So I think the doctor is yourself, yourself is the doctor, the doctor is the icon, mm. the doctor is the brand, the doctor is the mixing channel as well as the YouTube persona. Wow. So chatting through the docs is quite important, I think. And I think um, these are just sound bites that came through, you know, and so like and art and life. It's very interesting that the, what yeah. you have done, uh, picking that up and making it into a point of this whole exercise. That's really impressive. You know, it looks looks yeah. good on paper, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we talked about the uh, art and life have an insights, have insights and an infallible ally. And then what it matters when you go to the doctor, somebody who deploys method, data, reason, and deploys the work of their predecessors. So they accrued knowledge over time, you know, and then 
using the same principles uh, to art and creativity. You know, that objectivity and being able to offer artists feedback to other artists by being kind of that objective uh, person in the room. You know, so as an artist, you might get a recording down and you're like judging it and perfecting it, but you're kind of not quite there. Uh, and then you go through this idea of paralysis from analysis. Uh, and then, <laughs> this is quite funny in the video when you said, you know, I deploy the doctor. Uh, but it's really about um, technique, objectivity, and experience. One hundred percent. Here comes the red. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll see. Uh, you'll see. I've uh, kind of already started absorbing certain <laughs> moods and tones from uh, from your stuff that you've shared thus far. And you know, the unique positioning here really, I think, is to um, audiences, the competitor audiences that we talked about, Ros. The old world of like big studios and expensive rents and the whole kind of methodology of the past and what it took to be a professional. And then on the other side of the um, flip side in terms of the competition is all these young, new emerging kind of online mixing services. And I think the, you know, the Dr. Mix proposition is talking more, kind of linking the tradition of the past and the method and all that kind of stuff into a new era of online uh, audio services. So kind of spanning the, uh, you know, the method and the craft, but like in the, the online environment is the delivery. Wow. Okay. Wow. So that's quite important. Um, and then, yeah, we talked about personification <laughs> and obviously Quincy being like, um, one of your main inspirations, I think the capacity of being like an excellent producer, the diversity, bringing a whole palette and set of elements to any kind of project, you know, uh, whether it's percussion or deploying a major seventh chord or a soloist or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then we went on and talked, you know, in terms of there's actually a shot here where he is, feels like he is in a conductor kind of situation here, really it's being the guy that is like the one that is actually underpinning the entire process. You know, we talked about conductors looking straight in your eyes and saying it's now, baby, in terms of timing and that extra certain pair of hands. You know what's funny is like, it looks like uh, the words that I've said and that I know inhabit my head are now like a film, like a movie. I'm, yeah. I'm like watching it unfold before my eyes. It's quite, yeah. quite a strong sensation. What's important from the branding process is like when we do this with our clients and with, uh, you know, people that we're collaborating with, it's quite important that they're going to have to at some point generate a story and a whole bunch of web copy and all that kind of stuff on the about page. They're going to talk about themselves as an artist. So the idea of going through this process is not only to govern the creativity that's going forward, it's like the pictures and the colors and all that kind of stuff, but actually to empower you with the words so that you kind of understand yourself a bit better now on how to articulate it so that when it comes to the home page and you actually have to say three core messages in the carousel at the top, it kind of becomes easier because you look at this work and you go, okay, I know where to go from this. Uh, it gives yeah. a new meaning to the word uh, <laughs> visualizing it. You know, when they say yeah. you have vision, it's fun yeah. because this is the vision put in practice. Yeah, absolutely. This is something that I picked up on after that and it was just the idea of contemporary traditions. Sounds like an album name. I, I just really love the idea of, you know, obviously what you're doing in terms of social media and new media and video content and demoing is quite contemporary, but your where you've come from is like the idea of tradition and method. So it's kind of a nice dichotomy, like contemporary traditions. I think traditional contemporary doesn't sound so cool, but like contemporary traditions. It's cool. kind of a nice way. <laughs> yeah, nice way yeah, because it, it sounds almost one the opposite of the other and yet they complement perfectly each other. Yeah. And I've been watching a lot of graphic uh, videos again, and I think they, and also some of those um, kind of older music tweets, you know, when they were lining up analog equipment and building these crazy studios. At the time it was contemporary, but it's now become traditional. So it's just kind of an, an interesting kind of aspect of history and method. Whoa, uh, look at that! <laughs> Well quoted, my friend, well quoted. <laughs> you can see the design influences here. So, um, yeah, so the knowing the synthesizers and music production is a craft. What you to say with it is the art. I kind of like this whole positioning and I, I kind of like, that's the one sentence that you mentioned. I think your last video, you previewed it uh, with that one sentence as well. And it really does uh, cut through for me. So we're talking about an audience here, a collective audience thing. And the one thing that is, you know, from method to art, it's ultimately people that are either into this from a music positioning, being like a music nerd or somebody that's wanting to grow their skills or someone who just with it, you know, genuine love for what makes music come together. 
Yeah. Um, and we've called them geeks, but hey, it's it's no problem being a geek. I'm a geek. Uh, you're a geek. It's all good. <laughs> the world geekery. is the geeks, man. <laughs> and the power to the geeks, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we just talked about um, some of the uh, brands that you mentioned here, like obviously um, you've worked with the BBC, I've worked with the BBC. I think their class of content that they've produced is so artistic at times and it, it just has that whole underpinning of the, you know, the BBC production engine that is like a history of brilliant content. Uh, so I totally buy into that. Uh, I watched the Hell Letter community. It was quite interesting in terms of- It was um, cool, right? Yeah, no, it was super cool. Yeah, no, it was really interesting. Like, like people getting totally obsessive about type, which is um, kind of interesting, like in terms of your audience, like like what is an oscillator to the man on the street, but like to your audience, it's like a whole new start of a journey. You know? It's kind of... <laughs> I yeah. couldn't have said it better. <laughs> um, yeah, and the native instrument stuff, I thought that was really uh, quite cool. You shared that video again of when they were doing the machine and groove box, uh, Colombian kind of narrative. I, I do... Like, again, it's that tradition, but like thrown in a contemporary line that I really kind of um, identify with. And if you haven't spotted thus far, you know, the color <laughs> In case it wasn't clear red, enough earlier. <laughs> yeah, the color red uh, passion, precision and meaning. And I think what's, what's interesting is like when you touched on the firework site, I think partly the reason you love that kind of site is that it is black, red, white. And I think there's something about the purity of that mm. color red and I've dropped in the man machine cover here, but it's just really a good style reference. 100%. Um, for, for tone, but also for color, for typography and all that kind of stuff. Passion, precision, meaning. Uh, you know what? This is talent of yours. You know, just manage to visualize why I like red. I mean, I don't think I could ever say it that well. Mm. And it, that's exactly how I feel about the color red. Incredible. Mm. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. See, the thing about red is that it can be so primary, like blood and heart and like meat and like a fresh cut steak. And it can at the same time be ultra tech, tech focus. Like you imagine like the first color they would probably would have made in like LEDs for sound equipment probably was red, you know? Well, how does it's, bright, it's the brightest stuff in a dark space that comes to stand out and it kind of says, look at me, you know? Yeah. Um, so I've always loved red for that like unforgiving, kind of unapologetic kind of, and when you combine it with black and white, it just goes to next level kind of stuff. The next pages really are kind of into the mood board, but I must segue here and just talk about like, I've been reading your comments on the first video that you shared, and it's been really interesting seeing some community feedback on that. It <laughs> the is, passion, isn't it? Uh, of your audience and how they're connected to the brand as it stands. And I think um, one of the first things, or a couple of things that really came back, first of all, was like, I think there was a concern amongst the community that like through this branding process, you're going to kind of become ultra bleak, which is a, it is a concern because I think as brands grow, they kind of lose their, their authenticity and cred. So that was, I think, the first. And I think coupled with that was like a lot of characters were quite tied to the little doctor figurine that you had. So like I'm sitting in here and I'm I, I like chatting to you and I want to chat to you and pop like when you're looking at these mood boards, I think just have a think about tone in terms of what is like on the very professional mixing side. It's obviously brands on the pro type of audio side tend to get a bit more bleak. And I say when I use bleak, it's powerful, but it, they tend to cap all the character out. And then like Dr. Mix of the past has obviously got a lot of character. It's maybe not expressed in the best way. So it's just having an understanding of that kind of positioning. Obviously, you know, this is a collaborative journey. You're going to be a huge driver in terms of choosing that kind of mix. And then I respond accordingly. But um, yeah, so I definitely think keeping the character to some kind of guys is um, a good idea. So I would like to keep the character given that a little bit of uh, audience research right. and feedback. So thanks guys for that. That was 100%. awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's good to test stuff in the real environment, which is quite uh, fresh, for, fresh for me. I often work in the dark. Um, yes, let's do a character, but let's funk this character up. Like, like, what is he going to be if he's not this like kind of oldie worldy kind of thing? And that's kind of what I've looked at. Basically, what I wanted to do is um, so the mood board uh, sets a tone. I go up to existing artwork and existing materials. I grab a whole bunch of assets together and I put them on a page. And I go here, Claudia, what do you think of this? You just absorb it and you just like offer your feedback back. On this. So um, what I'll do is I'll go through this uh, first and then we can zoom back to the top and then we'll just progress to the next mood board. 
But like the first things that kind of came to me in, immediately was the opportunity here to create something with a real kind of attitude. And, you know, obviously the gorillas, uh, which is a guy called Jamie Hewitt, which is, he's actually up on my wall, like a tank or one of his first prints. From an art and branding thing for an artist, like gorillas is probably one of the most respected art brands out there in terms of the music space. I'm like looking at the character and I'm just thinking a lot about kind of attitude, a bit of like streetiness about it. And, and that kind of was the starting point from all the other stuff on the brand. Obviously there's some stuff that gets a little bit edgy, like you're not exactly like metal, dark hip hop kind of producer, kind of gangster New York style. There's something that's a bit more synth about it. So I just basically put like a wide selection of ways of doing character and actually they culminate in a very few recognizable music icons that I've picked up on here. Like you've got Black Plastic Man, which is Richie Horton, Ninja Tunes, Nervous Records from New York City. Yeah. This one is kind of interesting. Jean-Michel Jarre did a great album. I've still got the vinyl for the concerts in China. And what's interesting here is the black, the red and the white. And yeah, you know, like all these kind of like influences. And I think they all have this kind of edge to them, which I, I would love to be able to. Yeah, manage. yeah, I agree. I mean, each one of them seems to be making a statement on its own. I, I love it. I'm not exactly uh, sure how this plays out in the crafting of my thing. But yeah, I mean, I definitely Ooh, look at that David Bowie right there. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think um, you'll see I've actually done some like little ideas so you can always imagine like the sketches that I do and then match them to the style and even like off camera and down the line and you feed back to me in a couple of days, you can say, you'll sit with these mood boards and you'll sit with my sketches and you'll say, geez, I can really imagine this kind of applied to that. And you'll see some of the sketches, the potential to do different things in terms of creativity of like not just showing like a doctor figure front on doing something a little bit wild it, it is an opportunity wow. okay so so that's the first one shall i just progress hit me you up you can always man. come back and down the line if you want to no no I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go touch. ahead man okay cool cool um this next one was like interesting i just like been picking it up a lot of and it's like now you mentioned like the users that are on this uh, video i have heard you say that but your like new gig in terms of where you wanted to like put a neon thing in the room and that kind of like there's this thing called Synthwave, which has actually come through in multiple channels of like meme-based stuff and like, it's like this harmony with the older kind of 80s vibe. And it was just an interesting, I just put a wow. mood board in there for stuff. And But it's also like when you start taking elements out of it, so here's obviously a full-on Synthwave kind of vibe, but yeah. then like you could, for example, just focus on the dots or the gradients. In this example, they've done some colored cued imagery with like a gradient mix on it. And here's some like really abstracted 3D. Here's like some Daft Punk-esque kind of robot vibes. Yeah. Cat memes, we love cat memes, some really high key yeah. photography. Yeah, so when we're doing mood boards, we're not just talking about the icon and branding itself. It's potentially like the creation of media that goes into the website. For example, you might do like a really cool photo shoot for Claudio, um, where you're using like new imagery for yourself and maybe you do something that the way that you produce the content that's a little bit more. So it's just something that I, I just wanted to capture the romanticism about synthesis and what it meant in the 80s and like all that time. And it's a little bit different from the graphic stuff, which came a bit more earlier, but yeah. it was the kind of where it led to with Tron and, you know, Daft Punk and the Tron soundtrack and all that kind of cool stuff. I really like the technological edge to it. I mean, clearly you have your own style, even in just selecting. It mm. tells me a long story on how you see these things and, and, and what's your taste. And no wonder I like every single one of these images. Yeah. This is where I, this is where I started thinking contemporary traditions. Yeah, some nut has gone and like taken these old statues and covered them, covered them in neon, and I just love the friction that it creates. It's just the idea of old and new, which is kind of quite shocking but interesting at the same time. Fantastic. Anyway, that's lovely, man. Next one was really typography here, and it's just like if imagine we're going to have a symbol, but we might have a Doctor Mix piece of type, or even when we come to the website, you're going to have like a a lead headline font, which is your H1 on the website, and then followed by your suite of other font styles for all your content and your boxing and stuff like that. Yeah, there's some obvious references in here to these kind of like Sinclair brand is probably the old 
computer one and these, I don't, I, I don't profess to know where the backgrounds are. I just look at them for the type set. Yeah. But there's some stuff happening here, which is quite interesting. I really like this one over here, which takes the idea of like a strict formal typeface, but then does some effect on it that kind of like expresses like digitization. And obviously the MTV stuff is quite you cool from the past. That, yeah. What is that? The Kodak s s sign to the left? The K? The, this the one K? or? Yeah, that one. I'm not sure. It's something new, something interesting, but you can. It's really cool. You can start seeing how awesome black, red, and white is. Like this stuff is like, in terms of strength and standout, yeah. like this type here, or even this like stuff here, it's really starting to create like a really awesome, strong look and feel. Yeah. Even this little icon here in terms of very, you remember you highlighted on the Bowie icon, but just this idea of like very primary black line work with a nice red badge kind of starting to come together mm. in terms of the feel. Yeah, I mean, for, for some reason, that is a palette that I always gravitated towards. Yeah. You know, I think one of the times that I thought, wow, I had that idea is when I saw the white stripes, you know, yeah. the uh, white and red thing. And I, yeah. and they used pretty much the same palette. And I thought yeah. it was brilliant the way they, they had used it. Yeah, I know. It's absolutely good power stuff. Nice. And then like I did a couple of mood boards of color mix um, just to start looking at things. And I think this would be probably the most conservative approach, which would be basically to lock in like one hue um, and maybe use a, like a darker tone somewhere with a real strong use of black and white with some neutrals. Um, this is essentially how the Fire Dog brand works really. I've got some dark reds for background content panels and then I've got a bright red for some more active sign up buttons or some more functional stuff. And then I use a lot of white and gray and dark gray and black in the typography. Um, it gives you this kind of ultra clean feel. Then you can start doing things with like harmony. So harmony range is kind of, it's not a pure kind of a color model, like a, a simultaneous contrast or something like that, but it's, it's kind of uses like we segment a part of the palette and say, we're going to stick to warm, like an entire mm. brand is about warm. Mm. So I noticed on your latest, 808 mix package that you're quite proud of that uh, the use of like the <laughs> the German Olympic stripes on it <laughs> uses this kind of red, black, yellow, gold, gray kind of combination, which is kind of, kind of nice. And uh, contrast one is interestingly where you are at the moment, but maybe it's a case where you could make it a bit more serious, cut back on the brighter blues and oranges and maybe use much more bias of red. Mm. with a couple of blue elements to spot. This is quite interesting because it's quite a universal palette in terms of um, fits in with the British proposition, mm. um, you know, French, USA, it's kind of a Western kind of feel. Yeah, it's an option. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one is like, if we went for full range, this one I'm less so keen about because I think we're going to pull so much character through and like I would like to with the character uh, do a lot of like edgy kind of stuff and maybe with the typography. So I think Basically, in order to make it like well branded and tight, stick with a much more kind of limited color palette. Yep. And then just use the forms of graphics and typography as a way of expressing all the character and obviously the, the little cheeky guy himself, the Dr. Mix uh, yeah. character. Yeah. I think that um, when, can you please scroll down? Yeah, just a bit more. Yeah. That's the last yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Just further up so that we can see the last two reds. That's it. So the one below is slightly more on the orange side, on the yeah. orange, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, so all these reds are different. All uh, these reds are different. different. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that uh, the the red above it's probably closer to what I feel. Maybe it could even be a bit deeper. But obviously, uh, you know, I mean, you, you clearly mastered this. Mm. Color is just a perception and what's around it completely changes mm. the relationship and the perception of yeah. that same color. Yeah. But yeah, yeah in, uh, in general, I would say, yeah, I tend more to that sort of deeper Clear. red rather than the more orangey, lighter one. Yeah. But yeah. otherwise, I think that, uh, yeah, these color palettes are, are all very attractive. Yeah, I, I basically, I shortcutted everything because I kind of started getting the red vibes straight away. So I was like, let's not fight it. It's not jaded with green. That's it's not necessary. No, yeah, definitely. <laughs> cool. 
Yeah, and so the last mood board um, I've put together is really when I started taking um, all this kind of material, grabbed a pencil and paper, and I've made a bunch of sketches, but I've put, oh. put in the same presentation. But it's really just early stages about talking around the character here. So the first one really is pulling back a whole bunch um, and actually having like a full body part of the character. Um, and what started this inspiration is the NBA Michael Jordan thing that they managed to create an entire image around basketball by the stance. Um, and obviously his, you know, his air proposition, he was always in the air. I mean, I think that's where Nike Air came in and the whole footwear brand was like giving people lift. And I thought it was quite nice as a, as a starting point and just saying, look, that works in that sector. And then, yeah, I've obviously got things like Banksy in here and MJ, <laughs> yeah. Bruce Lee and all that kind of stuff. And then these two little sketches that I did, uh, sorry, excuse my little sketching, that's quite primary. Um, that's but I thought if we could, <laughs> He's, he's not doing a John Travolta thing. He's supposed to be doing something. Don't worry, he's not like sad night fever or something, but it's like... <laughs> but the idea is that like a little character where there's obviously a keyboard um, underneath the arm or there's something like maybe he's got a cable, you know, like a patch cable or something to imply like connectivity or something like that. Or this guy's got a stance and I thought this was quite nice because we could do like a more stencil kind of vibe and tell more story instead of it being in the face by the but overall character. And you don't necessarily have to do, you could do like an absolutely clean silhouette like this one in the very famous uh, iPod yeah. campaigns. The very first iPod campaigns in the early 2000s used this kind of use of silhouette. I remember. Uh, very well. Or you could have something a little bit more stencil like where you actually start to see. Yeah. And that ties in with iconography because you, you know, it's just a process of simplifying. That's Banksy, into, right? Yeah, that is Banksy. It was interesting about Banksy, he uses this contrast, like he's got this kind of ghetto ruffian, but then he's actually put flowers in there. So that's kind of an interesting contrast and that's how he works really. This one is quite cool because like, check this picture down here. You're always like, and, and this is also inspired by your audience. Like they, they love your on, on screen persona and your way that you present yourself. So this one is just like a little bit of a nod and it's a bit cheesy, but it's kind of like in the nineties, he's like rappers, he's have these ridiculous rings <laughs> with yeah. this Dr. Mix kind of thing. And you're always punching the lens and shoving yeah. your hands everywhere and setting your GoPros to stupid kind of uh, right. fisheye lenses. <laughs> so this was a, just a, a like, and there was a little hand thing I had on the mood board and I just thought like you could actually abstract it and move away from the face and just use the hand as a gesture point rather than the actual face as the Dr. Mix because obviously the hands are quite crucial. Everyone's talking about your silly jewelry that you always have in the videos. I mean, I've got some myself. Yeah. Uh, but also the mixing process is a very hands-on thing. The hands are crucial to the entire thing. Whether you're playing keyboards, it's always the hands. Um, so it's just an interesting way of turning on this head and actually showing hands instead of faces. Yeah. It's just an idea. You know? I think I like this very, very much. Oh, cool. <laughs> and then this one, this one, I thought, um, this is like, I've called this a progression of the current icon. And this one was like, if we took the current icon, made it much more, well, more obviously cloudier and like made it more you as a character, but then did it in these like really nice line styles with a little bit of a cheeky kind of street vibe going on. Yeah. And then I've got like a cap, I've got this big funky like oscillator on the top of the cap as an icon because like synths are always about oscillators and tweaking knobs and that whole geekery yeah. uh, thing. And, 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 you know, just doing this cheeky smile with like a shades on yeah. headphones as a way. Which is my default new... position. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> This one is a little bit more of a development is actually when I bring it even more cloudy because your current black um, guy has headphones, but you don't really spend a lot of time in headphones on, especially on your channel. True. So this is actually just bringing you back to more, uh, you know, bringing the more of the shoulders, little beaded uh, yeah. necklace chain kind of vibe that you've got, yeah. making it a bit more of a kind of a portrait that could yeah. be something done interestingly with color. Or again, you could do a version where you combine the kind of hand thing and it's like he's pointing at the screen with a copy yeah. ring or something like that. I tell you what I feel about that. Um, so can you go up, back up a little bit? Obviously, uh, a face like that with the headphones and, uh, and the hat and everything is much more 
appropriate uh, going down that route than you know the idea that my basic idea of the doctor with the you know the yeah. scope and everything my instinctive reaction to that is um i usually think when i see other people make car- uh, icons of their face or cartoons of their face it can be done very well like louis vega uh, whose image is basically a cut out of his the hat and his face but as well it can be very self celebrative self indulgent okay and um by comparison the idea of the of the fist with dr mix that you had immediately on top of that somehow it feels better because yeah. uh you know i i know that that hand represents me but it's it's like it's an aspect of what i am sort of magnified that represents yeah. you know the making the artistry yeah. the playing the mixing the using your fingers to do these things so instinctively yeah. i would say in general maybe i'm more open to the idea of characterization of my face maybe more for the channel that i am yeah. for the for the website i'm so glad you actually said that because um from a branding perspective it's quite nice that you with something that's a bit more abstract that you can represent a bigger team and a bigger proposition around like a bunch of people and a, a like this like a sound pack actually having something that is a bit more abstract it actually works quite nicely uh, easier to remember as well if you if you're always looking at faces it might yeah. be easier especially and, I, and this is why I'm tapping into this old ghetto like new york iconography is because it's going to trigger something in somebody and they're going to see that as like a little memory point and we create these little in branding we create these little mnemonics which are little triggers i explained yeah. in the first one with the marlboro kind yeah. of vibe it taps into a culture these... it does yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah you know in that respect uh, i mean we have like also you know sony music Uh, amongst yeah. our clients you know i don't want mm. to be too playful on the the actual service the production mixing and mastering service yeah. i can be more playful in the content in, in the youtube channel so it's just a point of difference no it's totally well valid. and this is when i was talking about tone and you being intricate to that kind of decision it's kind of down to your feedback in terms of where you want to strike the right kind of tone and then yeah. i just respond as a as an artist to turn that into a vision yeah. The, the other co- the last couple of things I wanted to show you here was just these kind of um I love this one over here. Um like I just thought this three quarter view could be quite funky and like this Chevron Mall post is kind of interesting because it's got the black and red and the what could be white you know as a, as a stamped yeah. kind of feel. Uh which so uh, this one looks at a three quarter proposition and the final one here is like ooh the, yeah <laughs> So uh, when when I was in just south of Golden Square in uh, when the studio was in the Soho area of London there was a, a toy shop it was called Kid Robot and um I talk about Cause yeah as well but the Cause is a very successful artist that has done these massive sculptures in these kind of forms and it's kind of like interesting because it it takes like a value but then it turns it into into a kind of a science fiction kind of image I thought immediately what would be cool is if you had this like little character where his like face is made out of oscillators or we took the entire synthesis process and we characterized it as like a cool kind of vibey character and I've done this with actual past clients as well like price runner was a um, price comparison uh, website and they actually had a price runner figure within their branding which was kind of abstracted the point where it wasn't actually a recognizable figure it just became like a brand story and I've done it another one with a music production uh, business where they have like a genius based model which is like kind of a robot kind of stuff. I can dig this stuff out for you. Show you this kind of stuff of how it's created. But it's kind of a nice way of um, creating something else that is not human but it has like some humanist kind of principles. I really uh, like the two knobs eyed character. That that's really cool. Yeah, that's I just really thought cool. like there's a few others that I have on the mood boards but that Marshall one you saw? Yeah. on the mood board which is quite cool if i come back to uh, on the mood board here and uh, this one over here was another kid robot kind of thing yeah uh so how the kid robot model works basically is you get a blank um i think it's called a money doll and you and why if i'm not mistaken and then all these artists go off and they corrupt it uh, by adding on bits of metal and machine work and so there's a whole artist collection of doing these funky little uh, kind of 
pieces of art and sculpture. And obviously this little character here and there's some other things where it kind of leans into that kind of um, abstracting it away from like a human character into a more of a synthesized and obviously this little guy here. Yeah. More of a synthesized kind of proposition. Yeah. So this is the kind of tone that we're just going to be aware of because um, just in terms of what's right for your audience and what's right for you and you yeah. know, I'll take your guidance on this and yeah, yeah you just you know, let me know. Yeah, I think that the bits that I that I like the most at this stage are, yeah, the the fist is very cool. The fist is very very cool. I like the idea of something that is like super stylized. I really like the idea of something super stylized. Obviously, the Air Michael Jordan idea is spot on because it's also a logo in itself, right? This triangular sort of starry configuration. Yeah. Configuration. And that's very iconic. So yeah, and uh, I think that on one level it needs to be uh, logo-y in, in a way, especially if I'm thinking in terms of uh, DrMix.com, the mm. service. I have a big expensive studio, mm. so I think mm. that is more of a place for a mature logo. And probably the main motivator for like why you're undertaking this rebrand in the first place. That's correct, because I, yeah. I felt that the Dr. Mix iconography was just a tad too playful. It worked, but yeah, maybe that's a bit too uh, too much. Excellent. So just um, next steps, Claudio, is um, you'll get back to me, however, yeah. which way you want to. And then, I mean, I've already got some good feedback, but you'll come back to me. And your best thing, my best advice is to just sit with this for a couple of days, yeah. you know, through a couple of showers, through a couple of dinners. And uh, maybe have it printed it's... on paper by a professional yeah. printer so that I can yeah. stick them around and see yeah. how they age yeah. in my yeah. perception. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I should Love do that. old school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, and then basically come back to me any which way you want in terms of feedback. You can draw lines between things and say, I'd like this kind of idea, but like, see these guys on the mood board, that's really good. The yeah. colors of verbatim, that's like obviously what we know what we're doing there. Yeah. Typography, I like this kind of stuff, this kind of stuff. Yeah. And you basically give me like a bunch of ingredients and then I go in and get baking ready. Yeah. <laughs> Cliff, thank you so much. This, this thing right. is so illuminating. It's really incredible to see this come to life and how you gather these pieces of information and you make it become a visual story. Fantastic. I, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm already super incredibly impressed. Okay, good. Good stuff. Excellent. Thanks, Claudio. All right. Well, listen, uh, what can I say? Thank you for now, then. Uh, and I guess um, you will send me some of this material, uh, maybe in high yeah. resolution, so I can print it. And, yeah. uh, and then we can get on to the next step. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, man. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. Me too, man. So thank awesome. you so much, Cliff. And thank you so much, guys for um, watching this and uh, I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I certainly did. We're gonna have Cliff one more time, for sure. In the meantime, you may want to watch this video next. And I wish you a lot of inspiration, love and uh, good feelings. Bye.